is your faith shipwrecked? You look at it, there's been lots of things that have been on TV and on movies and stuff since I was little, things like Swiss Family Robinson, Robinson Crusoe, Gilligan's Island, things where people have been shown to be shipwrecked, where they were once on the right course, they were once headed in the proper direction, they were once where they were supposed to be, then all of a sudden a storm came, something bad happened, they ended up being lost at sea, they ended up being stranded on an island somewhere, away from home, away from where they wanted to be, and their entire being, everything they did after that was focused on trying to get back home, and trying to get back with the ones that they loved, with family, and with their regular life. It's a perfect analogy for many Christians when our faith gets shipwrecked. So many times in life it's hard if you have a lost loved one, uh, you have a loved one that dies, and people get angry at God, and they wonder why God let them die, and their faith is shaken, or their faith is lost and they're no longer, it can cause them to actually fall away from God and stop believing in Him and stop believing in Jesus and their faith can become shipwrecked. Where it was once going on a straight path, it's now lost, taken over by the storms in life and the waves are crashing and the lightning is flashing and the storm is raging and they're shipwrecked. They're lost on an island somewhere and they don't know if they'll ever get back or how to get back. If someone loses their job or their career, if they need to support their family, that they need to give them a sense of accomplishment, a sense of well-being, people can get angry at God and they can curse God and be upset that they've lost their livelihood. And when they start blaming God and start putting the, the, the blame on Him and, and putting the rap on Him, once again, the faith can be shipwrecked, it can be lost at sea. The, just so many so many storms that come our way in lives if a, a couple who are married end up being divorced something happens where they can no longer be married and one of them is upset that it happened that way and that they want to still be married and the other one doesn't that person's faith can be shaken it can be destroyed it can be lost they can be shipwrecked. Someone who's sick, a sick child, a sick loved one, a sick friend. There are just so many different ways that our faith can become shipwrecked. What we have to understand though is God's not the one to blame. Okay? God's not the one to put your blame on. You have to understand that God said in His Word. He causes the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. Just because we're a Christian doesn't mean that we're exempt from life's troubles. Just because we're a Christian doesn't mean that we are going to have a perfect life, live our life as a bed of roses. And see, part of the problem with this whole concept is so many so-called Christians teach this. In fact, the majority of Christian leaders teach this now. It's called the Prosperity Doctrine. They teach that as long as you give them all your money, that God will give you a thousand times back in the money you give them, and that you'll be rich, and you'll be in perfect health, and you'll be have everything in life that possibly that life could possibly afford. And if you're not in perfect health, if you're not rich and have everything that they have, the people that teach you this, that means you're not giving them enough money. It means you're not living for Jesus Christ the way you're supposed to, which is just a total lie from hell, a lie from Satan. Because by that, by their own beliefs, they say Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, the disciples, the rest of the apostles, all the old school prophets, Ezekiel, Elijah, Elisha, that none of them were living for Christ or for God in the Old Testament or Christ in the New Testament the right way either. Even Jesus Christ himself wasn't living for God the right way, they say, because he didn't have fancy homes and fancy clothes and wasn't rich. That's the poison though, see. Satan's taking over this world. He knows his time is, is coming up so fast. No one knows the day and the hour of Jesus Christ's return, but Jesus, but God himself. But Satan knows 
that time's getting close. Just like we know, those of us who have discernment, we know we're in the season. We're, we're almost there. And Satan's taking over more and more power. And once the Holy Spirit takes the true Christians back to heaven with them, the dead, the living, the babies, the young children, like that, in the twinkling of an eye, then Satan will totally empower the world. But he's caused people to, to believe lies and deceptions. He used to cause me to believe that. You know, I spent over half my life backslidden as a phony, as a worthless Christian, as a no good, no good Christian. And I would be that way. I would be upset when something would happen that I didn't want to be done the way I wanted it to, and I would blame God. I mean, I wouldn't, I'd never curse God. I've always had a healthy fear for God. I've got a strong love and a healthy fear. But I would blame him for things. And But I learned, you can't blame God for anything. God is the creator of the heavens and the universe. He made us in his own image. And we can talk to him, we can pray to him, explain to him our feelings, but don't be rude and angry and try to, to be blameful towards God. Now, that's not the, the way to do things. You have to have a healthy fear for God. Love him, but fear him as well. Because he's a God of love, he's also a God of anger, a God of jealousy, a God of rage, a God of power, a warrior God. You need to respect him and understand that things are going to happen in our lives sometimes that are out of our control, that we don't like. But we don't know. See, this is the thing about it. God knew everything about us before we were, we were even conceived. He knew everything we would ever do. And when things happen in our lives that aggravate us and think that, and we think we've been shortchanged or we think that it's terrible, God's got a plan. He sees way beyond, like way into the future, beyond what we can see. So we don't know what's just around that next corner. We don't know what God could have saved us from by stopping this thing we wanted now or having this happen now because many times if a Christian dies man there are a lot of people that come to know Jesus Christ through that Christian's death there's a lot of non-Christians that come to funerals and that know them in their lives and and that they just come to the Lord because that person died and see the thing about it is as a Christian we forget so many times we have to remind her I have to remind myself I understand now but forever I always had to remind myself and get myself out of a funk when a, a Christian friend would die. When a Christian dies, they're in heaven, man. And I guarantee you, if they're a Christian who is saved by Jesus' blood, who lived the way the Bible says, cover to cover, and repented of sins after they were saved, not just anybody that calls himself a Christian, but I mean a true Bible-believing, Christ-following Christian, a Christian, Christian. They're in heaven, and they're in the best place they could possibly be. And I guarantee you, guarantee you you know people always like to take polls they say well this poll said that 85 percent of people said this and 15 if you took a poll of christians in heaven i guarantee you zero big fat zero percent <laughs> would say they want to come back down to earth <laughs> how can it be any better to be in the presence of god how can it be any better to die as gain as a christian but see the thing is you have to be a christian a real christian not this wishy-washy prosperity doctrine stuff, not the once saved, always saved, cheap grace stuff, a true Bible-believing Christian. See, my friends, the Bible says hundreds of times that if we have unconfessed sin and iniquities, which is a sin pattern that develops over time in our lives that we don't confess of, we're not going to heaven. We're not going to be raptured. See, that's why many Christians don't have consciousness anymore. They don't, they, they, they don't believe they can sin anymore because the Holy Spirit has packed his bags He's walked out of their heart because he can't live in a sin-riddled body and soul. The Bible says it over and over again. And it would be, it would take you maybe even a month or more to dig all those scriptures up. But lucky for you, there's a site, a website. Google this. Dan Corner, D-A-N-C-O-R-N-E-R, O-S-A-S, -S, Once Saved, Always Saved. This link on Once Saved, Always Saved from him is the best resource that I've seen anywhere next to the Holy Bible. But see, it gathers all those hundreds of scriptures in one spot, so you can read them. It's, it's an exhaustive read. It'll save your soul, though. But if you can read this whole link and still not believe that once saved, always saves a lie from hell, then first of all, you call God a liar in the Holy Bible, a book of lies. And woe, woe, woe unto you. You've got big problems there. And second of all, Satan's already got you. You're so spiritually blind now, he's already getting ready to take you down to the hellfire end. Where he'll check you in to your eternal accommodation in the lake of fire forever and it's sad that people just can't understand the truth they can't embrace what the truth is and if you have had bad things happen in your life and your faith's been shaken and, and, and you, don't, you no longer believe 
there's still hope. Just talk to Jesus. Just fall on your knees and ask him to forgive you from living in sin that you've been accumulating after you were saved and your doubt and your and just the way you've turned on him. And he'll accept you back with open arms instantly. And your relationship is right back where it needs to be at. Because once again, my friends, when the rapture happens like that, twinkling of an eye, no time for a timeout. There's no do-overs. There's no, oh, wait a minute, Jesus, I was just getting ready to repent. Oh, just give me a sec. Wait a sec, Jesus. None of that. Okay? It's over with. When he breaks the sky, we're gone. Then you're stuck here for seven years of hell on earth, the great tribulation. You think things are bad now? You think Satan runs the show now? This is like Disneyland compared to what it's going to be like then. So it just it's, it's a no-brainer. Just get right with Jesus Christ now. Have faith in him. Grow your faith. Pray for the gift of faith. I prayed for the gift of faith, and God gave me the gift of faith. Nothing on my own that I did. He gave it to me graciously. And I must receive faith. Now, my faith is unflappable. You could not show me anything that would make me not believe in God anymore. I know the truth. And pray for that faith, but just grow your faith. Make it grow. God, Let God test you and show him that you can be trusted for more and more and more. And then he'll just give you more and more if you ask for it. That's the kind of God that he is. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that people would just, Christians would understand that if we are backslidden, we have sin and iniquities in our lives, we need to repent and return to you now before it's too late. We need to fall on our knees and ask you to forgive us and ask you to be the Lord and Savior of our lives and just to be back in control of our lives or we're not going to be going to heaven. We'll be getting raptured. I pray you rebuke us, correct us, teach us, convict us. Don't give us any peace, happiness, joy, comfort, satisfaction, anything until we repent and come back to you and live for you the way the Bible says. I love you so much, Jesus, and I thank you for all you do for us. We need to be out there reaping the harvest. It's rotting in the field because it's so plentiful and there's so few harvesters. We need to share the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of your word and what you did for us every day. Can you call us home? Your precious name I ask you, amen. My friends, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, pray to spirit with me. Jesus, I know I've sinned. I've done bad things in my life, and I'm sorry. I believe you came to earth. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you rose again on the third day. I believe you went back to heaven to be at the right-hand side of the Father to make a place for all Christians forever. Please forgive me of my sins. Come live in my heart. Wash me pure and holy. Make me a new creature in Christ, the child of the King. In precious name I ask it. Amen. If you pray this prayer, Jesus says that all who come to me and ask, shall be saved. If you'd like me to pray with you, send me an inbox, a private message. I'd love to pray with you. If you have a friend, neighbor, co-worker, loved one, anyone who does not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you're sick, if you have a sick friend, neighbor, relative, co-worker, loved one, a sick pet, if you ran into somebody on the street, this is a stranger that you just met that's sick. If you need a job, car, home, food, clothes, water, any need, if you'd like someone to pray for you that believes, send me an inbox, a private message. I would love to pray for you. I pray you believing in my heart, speak with my mouth, knowing that God will answer all my prayers if I pray in his holy will. Do the same for you, my friends. Test him. His word never returns empty. Well, thanks for watching this video. I know how busy we are in life. And please share the link to this channel, this video, and other videos with friends, neighbors, co-workers, loved ones, with strangers. Drop into a blog somewhere. Plant the seed and walk away and let God water it and let it grow. People need to hear the old-fashioned word of God, the way it was preached. The way it should be preached in every church corner in the world, but it's not anymore because pastors are afraid to preach it the way it's supposed to be preached. The Holy Spirit gave me a mandate and told me to preach it. And that's what I do. All for His glory, never for mine. But let's get the word out so people can be saved. They can repent of sins and iniquities. They can have miracles happen in their lives. They can get off the sidelines and reap the harvest while there's still time. I love you guys. I pray for you every day. And may God bless you.